we are at uh, the Faculty of Theology at uh, Stellenbosch University where uh, I have the privilege to teach and um, I came in today in my car, it's a beautiful spring day uh, I didn't come in because it's, it's raining, I came in because I have to collect an artwork that I'm taking with me uh, to Brazil this weekend. I'm going to uh, speak at a conference at a seminary called Faculdades Est in uh, Sao Leopoldo uh, in Brazil and so I have to take the artwork uh, home with me. But uh, it struck me as I was driving in that uh, I've been there before and uh, when I visit uh, places where the uh, primary language is not English I sometimes miss out on a few things. There are subtleties uh, in the, uh, the sort of lived world of the people that you encounter there that you don't pick up on because their language creates the opportunity for them to uh, communicate, to share things and uh, it creates a world space in which they live. And that struck me that uh, public theology has uh, that task of translation. Um, in the discipline of public theology we, we often speak of this as the bilingual nature of uh, public theology. Now what do we mean by that? Well um, in an earlier video I spoke about David Tracy's notion of the three publics uh, that are operable uh, in public uh, theology. I'll put a link to that uh, article in the show notes. But the three publics that Tracy identifies are the public of the church, the public of the academy and the public of society at large. And each of those three contexts, uh, the church, the academy uh, and society at large where people live and work and play their sport and uh, their lives take place, that each of those three has uh, a different language in a sense. Now Nico Koopman speaks about this wonderfully. He says one of the, the sort of distinctive marks of public theology is that it gives expression to uh, the reasonableness of our faith. Perhaps that's what we do here at the Faculty of Theology. We conduct technical, uh, complex, theological work. Our jargon is often very particular. Uh, we have particular methodologies. You know, if you're a biblical scholar or a practical theologian or a systematic theologian, uh, in each of those disciplines there's a different approach and it's often quite technical and rigorous to work out uh, the reasonableness of what we believe. How do we reason it? Uh, how do we ensure that it, that it is reasonable and sound? The second thing that Kupman says is that we also deal with uh, the contents of our faith. And in some senses, uh, I would think that that reminds me a little bit of the church. There's a beautiful uh, old church just uh, down the road from the faculty here. And the kind of language which is used in the church compared to what we use in our lecture halls is slightly different. Uh, in the church, there's a, a shared thought space. Uh, we know that people have similar understandings of words that come from the Bible when they use them. Of course, there's a great deal of hermeneutic contention there that we address here in the faculty. But generally, in a congregation, people would tend to share a particular view of the use of Scripture. Words like worship or prayer or uh, community may have a shared meaning. You can quote the Scriptures uh, in that context and people can very often share their faith in a particular way there. That's the contents, the, the forming of the Christian disciple. But the third space in which uh, theology operates, and certainly theology operates very strongly within the church, but the third space in which our theology operates is the public of society at large. Now that's a space where we encounter people of different faiths and no faith. It's a space where religion sometimes is regarded with uh, great suspicion. And the way in which we embody our theology in the public of society at large needs to be slightly different. Our approach, our tone, uh, the manner of our respect uh, needs to be evident in that space. For example, if you were just to walk into your workplace and start quoting verses from Scripture, uh, people may not respond as you expect them to. They may not respond in the same way as they would during a sermon in the public of the church. If you were to just quote uh, scripture verses without recognizing that they have a social historical context, uh, that they have a particular grammatical syntactical aspect to them as we deal with here in the public of the academy, uh, these colleagues may have some problem with that. So the thing that I want to encourage you to think a about a little bit today is this notion of bilingualism. As your theology is public, and uh, you've heard me speak about this before, I don't believe that there is any private faith or private theology. Everything that we believe has public consequences. But as we operate in the three different publics of society, in the church, in the academy, and in society at large, how can you translate your faith so that it makes sense uh, to the people that you will encounter in those spaces?
So I'll put some links in the show notes uh, to some of the articles that I've referred to. Nico Quipman's article on the contours in public theology and David Tracy's article on the three publics. But uh, th remember, this is not a lecture, it's just a thought. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you found the video useful, then uh, please give it a like, maybe share it uh, somewhere. It helps to make it a little more visible. Subscribe to the channel, then you'll be updated uh, whenever new videos come along. And hook up with me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, or on Facebook. So thanks for watching.